Let's talk about some buy low players. Number one on my list is Emmanuel Quickly. Quickly has been one of the best six men in the league since he entered in 2020. And now, as a starter in Toronto, he really has a chance to blossom. In 30 games with the Knicks this year, he averaged around 24 minutes, 15 points, 2.5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 0.6 stocks, and 2.1 three-pointers per game, while shooting at 40% from deep. Those are solid numbers for a six-man, but since joining Toronto, he's averaged 31 minutes per night. And with that, he's seen a nice increase in production. He's averaging around 19 points, 4.6 rebounds, 5 assists, 2.9 three-pointers, and is shooting at 47% from deep. He's also getting 0.9 stocks per night. He's been able to double his production in a number of categories with only 7 extra minutes per night. And with Pascal Siakam now going to Indiana, he should be relied on even more to not only be a scorer, but a playmaker. And I think even with Bruce Brown joining the team, Quickly's role is pretty safe. He's going to be starting and logging heavy minutes. I think Quickly should have a really strong finish to the season, and I may be biased, but it just seems like all these Kentucky guards find their way in the NBA one way or another, at least in recent years. I mean, look at Jamal Murray, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Devin Booker, Keldon Johnson, Tyler Hero, Malik Monk, De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Maxey, and even Shaden Sharp. And this is not including the players who are not guards. Kentucky just produces monsters, and I think quickly has a talent to finish just outside of the top 50. And if you can get him now before he really takes off, I would try to. Next on my list is DeAnthony Melton. Melton's only rostered in 67% of leagues, so you may not even have to trade for him. He may be available on your waiver wire. And if he is, I would strongly consider picking him up. Right now, he's out of the lineup because he's dealing with a back injury. I think they're calling it spine stress. He missed three games at the beginning of the month, then he came back for two, and they shut him down again, just so they could let the injury heal properly. The hope is, with a week's rest, he'll be back to normal and handling a normal workload. Prior to the injury, Melton was enjoying a solid year, seeing a career high in minutes, points, three-pointers made per game, and assists. Melton has definitely benefited from the void that James Harden left behind, and also from the fact that both Kelly Oubre and Joel Embiid both missed extended periods of time with injuries. But he's been solid nonetheless, and while Melton has definitely improved on his offensive game, he has built his reputation around his defensive prowess. This year, he's fourth in the league with 1.6 steals per game, and that's not an anomaly. He had 1.6 steals per game last year, and that's in line with his career average of 1.4 per game. And it's not just steals. He'll get you half a block per game, and he'll also get you four rebounds per game. And with the Sixers sitting in the three spot in the East, I don't see them switching up their lineups too much. So if you're looking for a well-rounded, defensive-minded guard, I would definitely give Melton a strong look. He'll get you around 12 points per game, and also a couple of three-pointers. Last on my list is Franz Wagner. Wagner's missed the last seven games after suffering an ankle injury against the Kings a couple of weeks ago. But before going down, he was having a career year, averaging around 21 points per game, around six rebounds per game, four assists, and one steal per game. He has seen a notable dip in his three-point shooting for some reason. This year, he's shooting at around 29% from three. For his career, he's closer to 34%. So if he can clean that up, he has a really good chance to finish inside of the top 50. He's still going to get you around one and a half three-pointers per game, but if he can clean up that efficiency just a bit, that'll really move the needle for him. It's pretty clear that he and Pablo Banquero are the future for this team, and if you can get him now while he doesn't have a timetable to return, I would try to. As an added bonus, he gives you roster flexibility. He can go into the shooting guard, small forward, or power forward spot. Those are some buy low players to target. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and let me know which players you think we should target in the comments below.